Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to our today's class. It's our first lesson on the fifth topic of Form 3 work, which is called Current Electricity 2. As usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day, which states that sometimes you just have to create your own sunshine. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at Current Electricity 2, which is just a continuation of um, Cells and Simple Circuits, which was the last chapter under Form 1 work. So let's start by discussing what we mean by an electric current, which is denoted by capital I, and potential difference, which is denoted by capital V. So in Form 1, under Cells and Simple Circuits, we did say that electric current refers to the rate of flow of charge through a conductor. So remember, whenever we talk of the rate in uh, mathematics or in physics, it simply means we have to put the aspect of time into consideration. Therefore, uh, mathematically, um, current, electric current I will be given by the charge divided by time. So the red stands for division by time. Then the charge, of course, is noted by capital Q. Therefore, the current uh, I is equals to charge over time. So the red uh, of flow of charge through a conductor. Now, in physics, an electric current is usually measured by an instrument called an ammeter. So the SI unit for current is the amperes denoted by capital A. Although we can have some uh, subdivisions of amperes, for example, we can talk of milliampers, which are the smaller units of measuring current. But actually, the SI units for uh, current is actually the amperes. So if you look at an ammeter, an ammeter will always be denoted either in amperes or in milliampers. So the, an ammeter is simply an instrument that we use to measure current in physics. Then you have said that the rate of flow of charge mathematically simply means that charge divided by time. Therefore, current is simply charge divided by time. From the same same formula, we can deduce that uh, charge can as well be given by the product of current and the time taken for that particular current to flow from one point to another. So next we look at a uh, potential difference which refers to the work done in moving a unit charge between two points in a circuit. Remember the word unit in this case simply means one. Therefore we are talking of the work done in moving only one charge between two points in a circuit. That is what we are defining as the potential difference. And potential difference is usually measured by an instrument called a voltimeter which is usually denoted in volts therefore the units that we use to measure potential difference are simply the volts which are denoted by uh, capital v now from this definition uh, we have seen that potential difference shall be given by the work done in moving a unit charge between two points so that simply means that potential difference will be given by the work done divided by the charge work done divided by charge so work done in moving a unit charge between two points in a circuit so mathematically a potential difference denoted by a v is equals to the work done divided by the charge moved that is directly from this particular definition here so mathematically potential difference is equals to work done in moving a given charge divided by the number of charges which have been moved so work done we denote it by capital w then charge moved we denote it by q so remember the work done for it to be a potential difference the work done has to be strictly in joules and the charge moved must be in coulombs that is each quantity must be in its respective si units therefore in terms of simples potential difference v shall be given by the work done w divided by the charge moved Q. Therefore, V is equals to W over Q. So we can also make the work done to be subject of the formula whereby uh, we multiply both sides by Q. Therefore, work done in terms of that is to move a charge can be as well given by the product of the charge and the potential difference. So from the same same formula that potential difference is equals to work done over charge, we can easily uh, deduce that because potential difference is usually measured in volts, then uh, work done is in joules, then um, a charge is usually in coulombs, and you are taking charge divided by, that is work done divided by charge, so simply means the units here will be joules per coulomb. Therefore, we can easily deduce that one volt 
is equals to 1 joule per coulomb from this particular relationship here. Now we can look at an example uh, which is applying the formula for the potential difference being equal to work done divided by charge. So we are given that in moving a charge of 10 coulombs from, um, from point B, 120 joules of work is done. So what is the potential difference between points A and B? So we know that um, uh, potential difference is equal to work done divided by the charge. So we are given the work done as 120 joules divided by the charge that uh, is being moved within that particular uh, by that energy of 120 joules is 10 coulombs. So potential difference will be work done over charge. So that is 120 joules divided by 10 coulombs, which gives us 12 volts. Then in an electrical circuit, uh, an ammeter is always connected along other components simply because it has a low electrical resistance. Alternatively, we can also say that an ammeter is usually connected. That is, in an electrical circuit, an ammeter is connected in series with other components because it has a very low electrical resistance. So that means if it has low resistance, it will actually allow the current to flow to other components. For example, in this particular case, this is our ammeter which is connected along uh, a bulb or which is connected in series with the bulb. So an ammeter, because it offers very low resistance to the flow of charge, it means that uh, when current flows from the battery, uh, it will actually pass through the ammeter, which offers low resistance. Therefore, uh, part of the current will be allowed to go to other components, for example, the bulb in this particular case. So that is the reason why ammeters are always connected in series with other components, because they offer low resistance to the flow of current, and therefore, it allows other components to actually get the current. Then, um, however, for a voltimeter, a voltimeter is usually connected across other components. Remember when we talk of across, in physics we mean being connected in parallel. So a voltimeter is connected across other components in an electrical circuit because a voltimeter offers very high resistance to the flow of charges. Alternatively, you can also say that a voltimeter is usually connected in parallel to other components because it has a high resistance to the flow of current. So it offers very high resistance. So this is what we are calling being connected across. So this is uh, a voltimeter which is connected across a bulb. So remember, if a voltimeter is offering very high resistance to the flow of charge, if you connected a voltimeter uh, along other components or in series with other components, that simply means that the voltimeter will resist all or even most of the current from reaching other components. So to avoid that, we connect it across other components so that when current comes, it actually passes through our bulb, which is our other component, then uh, the voltage is measured uh, across the way this circuit is connected. Otherwise, if you connected a voltimeter, for example, somewhere at this particular region, all the current that was flowing from the battery, once it reaches the voltimeter, it will be resisted. Therefore, our bulb or any other components within that particular circuit will not receive any current, maybe uh, to detect its presence. So strictly, we have said that in an electrical circuit, an ammeter is connected along other components or is connected in series with other components. The reason is because it has low electrical resistance. Therefore, it allows current to move to other components. However, in an electrical circuit, a voltimeter is always connected across or in parallel with other components because a voltimeter offers very high resistance to the flow of current and therefore, if connected in series, it will not allow the current to reach other components within that particular circuit. Then um, uh, in a practical, that is an ammeter and a voltimeter should always be connected in such a way that uh, the positive terminal of the ammeter is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and also the negative terminal of the ammeter is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So do not reverse because when once you reverse it means the coil uh, that is the pointer will actually deflect in the uh, below zero or in the negative direction and that is likely uh, to destroy uh, that particular 
coil also in an electrical that is when you are connecting components a voltmeter should also be connected in such a way that the positive terminal of the voltmeter is connected to the positive terminal of your battery or your cell also the negative terminal of the voltmeter must always be connected to the negative terminal of the battery remember we said the larger bar represents the positive terminal of the battery while the smaller bar represents the negative terminal of that particular battery next we look at um, that is a diagram that is when components are connected in series and when they are connected in parallel so whenever components are connected in series uh, the total current uh, must be equal to the current across each and every component for example the total current uh, because we have three bulbs here which are connected along each other or which are connected in series so whenever components are connected in series then the total current or the total current from the battery must be equal to the current through each and every component for example if maybe the current from the battery maybe if it was three amperes it means the current drop through the bulb will be three amperes the current through our second bulb will also be three amperes the current through the third bulb will also be three amperes so whenever components are connected in series the total current must be equal to the current through the first component which it must be equal to the current through the second component current through the third component current through the fourth component etc that is depending with the, the number of components that are actually connected in series however when components are connected in series the total voltage or the supply voltage is equals to uh, the sum of the voltage drops across each component for example in this case the total voltage or the supply voltage from the battery is equals to the summation of the voltage drop through the first bulb plus the summation of the voltage through the second bulb plus the summation of the voltage through the third bulb therefore v total or the supply voltage is equals to the voltage that is through the first bulb plus voltage through the second component plus voltage through the third component so these two equations will be very very applicable when we'll be doing some calculations involving a series and parallel connection of resistors or any other components so now when components are connected in parallel now it becomes the reverse so when they are connected in parallel the total current is equals to the sum of the current through each of the component for example in this case i total that is the total current is equals to the current through the first bulb plus the current through the second bulb plus the current through the third bulb depending with the number of components that you have so total current is equals to the summation of the current through each component that is strictly when they are connected in parallel the way uh, these bulbs are connected or when they are connected across each other however for the case of voltage when um, components are connected in parallel or when components are connected across each other then the total voltage must be equal to uh, the voltage through each and every component so the supply voltage v total is equal to voltage through the first component which must be equal to the voltage through the second component equal to the voltage through the third component so v total is equal to v1 is equal to v2 is equal to v3 so that is for parallel connection so now we can uh, look at an example uh, which is utilizing uh, components which are connected in parallel so we are told that find the current passing through uh, l1 given that um, 0.8 amperes uh, passes through the battery in short this is the supply current uh, comma 0.28 amperes passes through l2 and 0.15 amperes passes through l3 so if we look at these particular bulbs they are connected across each other or they are in parallel they are connected in parallel with each other then you have said that whenever components are connected in parallel total current will be equal to the summation of the current through each and every component therefore the total current i total must be equal to the current through the first bulb plus the current through the second bulb plus the current through the third bulb therefore i total is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 so we are given the total volt total current as 0.8 therefore 0.8 is equal to the current through l1 or the first current through the first component that is the unknown plus the current through the second component we are given as 0.28 that is current through l2 
plus the current through the third component that is uh, L3 or I3 we are given as 0 0.15 so 0 0.8 is equal to I1 plus if you take 0 0.28 plus 0 0.15 you'll get 0 0.43 so if I make I1 subject of the formula I'll simply take 0 0.43 towards the left hand side so that I have 0 0.8 minus 0 0.43 being equal to I1 therefore I1 will be equal to uh, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.43 which gives us 0 0.37 amperes. So we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that sometimes you just have to create your own sunshine. So the quote is encouraging us to learn the art of isolating positivity even from negative situations. So the quote is further reminding us that not every day will be good but we must learn to see and appreciate what is good in each day. Remember, every day always has something positive, even being alive, that is part of the positivity. And lastly, recall that your mind is the most powerful tool on your body. Therefore, fill it with positivity, fill it with positive thoughts, because the quality of your thoughts will always determine the level of your happiness in life. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll always get notified. Thank you very much. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy.